Oh my god, is the glass broke? <gasps> oh sh. Okay guys, so I like to improvise and use whatever I can find for my videos. For this commercial, instead of buying some expensive gear like a slider or one of those rotating platforms, some extra lights, I decided to use whatever I could find in the attic. And before we get into it, I just want to say that I'm not affiliated with Kraken in any way. I bought this bottle of rum because it looks really cool, I like rum and <laughs> I like pirates. Who doesn't like pirates? Lighting is probably the most difficult and frustrating part whenever you're shooting something like glass bottles or liquids because you don't want any distracting reflections on the glass. What I have here is my Godox SL60W, but as you can see I modified it a little bit. I saw this in one of Austin Paul's videos and I'll link his channel in the description because you really have to check him out if you like these commercial style videos. This is a reflector that I taped on backwards and then on top of that I taped an empty toilet paper roll and what this does is it creates a spotlight on the label. Now this works really well but it still gave me some weird reflections above and underneath the label. I think it's because of the text on the bottle so what I did is I made some more improvements, some more modifications. I put this super professional paper construction in front of it and what this does is it blocks some more light from the top and the bottom so that the light really gets focused on the label. Now, why did I put it in between the bottle and the light? That's just because when I put this closer to the light, I get soft shadows on the label and when I put it close to the bottle, I get hard shadows on the bottle, on the label. So this way I can choose. You see, whenever you don't have the gear that you need, just bring out your inner MacGyver and you'll make it work. <laughs> And for my table setup, we have the bottle of rum on a piece of glass that I found here in the attic. It's the glass from a picture frame, but that creates that nice reflection at the bottom. Behind the bottle is my Pixel RGB light to create that beautiful warm glow in the rum. And then for the background, again, something I found here in the attic, a blanket with another RGB light to make it blue. Now, I didn't want anything bright and blue, but a dark blue background in combination with that warm orangey glow I don't know, it felt very piratey to me, like a pirate ship. Also with the shape in the blanket, what do you think? But yeah, that's about it for the lighting setup. Oh, this thing right here is just to brighten up the left side of the bottle depending on the shot. That's it. The opening shot is super simple, a full body shot, a pullback shot of the bottle. Now I have two options, I can do this digitally and post, but the problem is that when you do a real pullback shot, the background and the perspective also changes and it just looks a little bit better. Now like I said before, I don't have a slider so I had to come up with another solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this shot with my tripod. I'm just gonna tilt my tripod like this to do the pullback shot. And then in post, I'm gonna add some more movement to make the shot even more dynamic. Okay guys, this is where it gets really interesting because I really want to make this bottle dance the pirate dance or something like that. And what you need then is one of those rotating platforms. But I saw Daniel Schiffer in one of his videos use a stool with a spinning seat and it worked really well. So I was like, I can find something like that here in the attic and I certainly did. I found this old record player, old turntable and it still works. So when I pretend to play a record, now isn't that fabulous? The problem is that it spins a little bit too fast maybe. I could probably make it work by shooting in 120, 60 frames per second and then slowing it down, but I don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it off and then spin it manually. And that way I have more control. I can go as fast as I want, as slow as I want, and I can stop whenever I want. But an old record player,
For the next shot, I'm gonna use another technique in combination with the spinning platform, because I want that rotating movement, but also a downward movement. What I'm gonna do is, there's a screw here at the bottom of my tripod, and when I tighten it not too tight, then my camera starts moving on its own. You see that? It's going down all on its own, like, yeah, like a robot. Not really a robot, but you get what I mean, right? And that way, I can move my camera up, tighten that screw until the camera starts moving like that then hit record and spin the platform at the same time and then I get two movements in one shot it's not gonna be easy but I think it's gonna work For the shots with the ice cubes and the pouring of the rum, I changed my lighting setup. I have a softbox right here as the key light, then an LED panel on the right side of the glass to create some highlights. And then behind the glass, I have an RGB light with a translucent plastic bag in front of it. And that's to light the ice and the glass from the back, but also to create some interest in the background. And then this thing right here is my ice cube slide. Because my initial plan was to use fake ice cubes, but then I found these molds online to make really cool ice cube skulls. And I thought that would be a great idea for what I'm doing here, the whole pirate thing. The only problem is that they're real ice cubes, so the idea behind this is that I have more control over where the ice cubes land in the glass. Because I only have a limited supply per batch, and I hope it works. Ready? Yep. And go! Okay, try another one. You're shaking. Yeah, you're shaking. <laughs> That's the pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and go. Oh my god, is the glass broke? <gasps> oh sh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Now what? I don't know if you can see it, but the skull broke the glass. Focus on the glass. There. God damn it. Glass number two, take number one, and go. You got it. Really? Yep. Can I see it? <laughs> Try one more. And go when you can. Oh, Whoa! Shit. <laughs> Okay guys, now about those ice cubes. Look, they look really really cool, super detailed with the teeth and everything, but it's real ice and I have a mold for only 4 ice cubes. The freezer is downstairs, so you can imagine it, right? It's a miracle that I didn't break my neck trying to get those ice cubes up to the attic as quickly as possible. The thing is, you can only get like 1 or 2 shots per ice cube and then the details start to melt away. It was a real pain to get it right. And now that I think about it, maybe they have glass or plastic skulls like that that I could have used. I'm not, e I'm not even gonna check because, I mean, it's too late anyway. But what I did is, I took a photo of one of those ice cubes and then when editing, I used that as an overlay to bring out the details where they had disappeared, melted away. So just by changing the blending mode and the opacity. And it's not perfect, but the shots are short and I think it looks really good. I'm super happy with the result and it was a fun challenge using everything I found here in the attic. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with all your friends. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.